We've been obsessed with SteamWorld Quest over here at Switch Force. The SteamWorld franchise has yielded some incredibly fun titles, and yet Quest may be the best game yet. So while the card battling RPG skyrockets up our favorite Switch games chart, we wanted to dig deeper into what makes the cogs of this excellent adventure spin so beautifully. And who better to talk to than image and form games themselves? Guys, thanks so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you for having us. All right. I'm, Absolutely. I'm, I'm not with image and form. <laughs> Gabe, we, we, we wondered for a long time, Gabe, if you were a developer, yeah. but, but sadly today is, is not that day. Okay, so obviously we've got Gabe here, and uh, who else do we have with us? Sure. Yeah, so I'm uh, Polina Lornea, and I work for Thunderful uh, Publishing. So I do the marketing for Image & Form Studio. I work with events and influencers. Awesome. Yeah. Hi, my name is Esteban Soto, and I am uh, was the lead level designer for uh, SteamWorld Quest, and also been a level designer for uh, SteamWorld Dig 2. Cool. Yeah. And I'm uh, Peter Magnusson, I'm the producer for SteamWorld Quest. Very, very cool. I feel like this is like the, the dream team. This is our, our, <laughs> our party wow. here. We need to give everyone a deck and, and get ready to go. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Wait, Zach, Zach, if, if this is a party, well, they're a party because there's three of them. Are you and I the, the boss? Are we the enemies? Yeah, we are. Oh, yeah, man. We, we got the question. <laughs> we're, we're loaded up with all. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. This is so fantastic. Uh, as I mentioned, you know, we're huge fans of the franchise, and it's, it's so cool to uh, not only get to, to play the game, but the fact that it is a, a Switch specialty. Like, that's so awesome. Uh, for the platform and for us. But let's dig into some of the, the nitty gritty, some of the bigger questions that we have after both of us beating the game uh, and both of us loving the game. Um, so you've developed uh, on a number of different Nintendo platforms and this is the, the second new title on Switch. What's it been like this time around? What's it been like developing for the hybrid and is there anything that's become easier or more streamlined this time around? I can uh, I can start to answer that I think um, uh, we've uh, so so if we're looking at the like developing for uh, consoles like uh, Switch which is a hybrid uh, mm -hmm. both a, uh, um, like something you sit and play in your couch at the television and something handheld uh, some of the games that we've made previously have been more from the get go designed to be a handheld experience uh, right it, it's really been uh, quite. Uh, Quite natural uh, for some of our titles to just they they uh, play very well in a handheld mode. Uh, SteamWorld Quest was not made for that specific purpose, but it yeah. works pretty well that way. And I think that's a common uh, something that's been common for most of our titles so far. Gotcha. Yeah, absolutely. I can just agree with that. <laughs> Speaking of common, uh, handheld isn't, at least for me, and for Zach kind of just based off what I know, we don't play handheld a ton, but I think Zach and I both like almost exclusively played Quest and handheld. We've gone back and, and mm -hmm. played Doc just to see what it looks like and, and capture stuff, but something about Quest just really brought out the you know older gamer in me that really loved playing on handheld, so that, that, that was like super surprising and cool to me. Yeah, no, it's definitely, it's actually very fun to play in a handheld. Yeah. I was also surprised in myself. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, I'm a little bit biased, but... <laughs> yeah, we, we've done a lot of our testing uh, sort of using handheld devices because we don't have, like, TV setups for a bunch of people at the office. So so it's it comes quite natural to, to have that as a factor when testing the game. Yeah. Awesome, yeah. And I, I'm a huge board and card game fan. Um, and obviously this game has a lot of influences from those realms. What were some of the either board or card or even video game inspirations uh, when you guys were first creating Quest? Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, well, we're a bunch of uh, board game. Oh, awesome. Well, yeah. card games. Uh, I've been playing uh, both Magic the Gathering and uh, I have like an entire room full of board games at home as well. Me too. That's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a fabulous uh, set of games. A, a good complement to the digital. Uh, what can you say? Uh, we were talking about that earlier, actually, that uh, yeah. there, there are some, like when you play board games and card games, uh, mm -hmm. sort of as a, as a game developer, you want to sort of dissect them down into pieces and you, you see ideas and, and themes and uh, some of those stuff like were ideas that we thought we could maybe make into a game that maybe could be even better uh, than we played physically. Yeah, I mean, it was like, we're like a bunch of 
geeks in the office, really. <laughs> <laughs> so we have like our own uh, board game sections also. So mm -hmm. we have like different th nights when we're just playing games and stuff. And it was a lot like we have always liked card games mechanic and also the RPG mechanic. We were always like thinking how we could combine it and everything. Uh, some games we looked into is Mega Man Battle Network, for instance. Um, how they treated their mechanics and uh, button kaitos. Uh, oh, what was it more? It was also this Fate card game that one of us had played. That was like, oh, this is a cool idea. We should actually look into this. And we were like, oh, okay, that's cool. Um, oh man, but been a lot of card games. Yeah, yeah, exactly. In the office <laughs> flying around, so. And I started, and it all started out loud. No, <clears throat> we just started out just prototyping and doing our own card games, for instance, with all those ideas. Man, and speaking of card games, there's like over a hundred punch cards for players to experiment with, uh, but the enemies also have cards. Uh, do you yep. like have any idea how many there are in total? Because we don't ever get access to those, and <laughs> so what's the total number of like cards that there is when you include everything that the enemy has? I have a feeling that you guys are hiding some of the super cool ones, and that we'll never get access to. Them. <laughs> Oh, wow. Well, there's a bunch of cards. Uh, yeah, see. yeah. I, I don't actually know the total number uh, by heart. Uh, like, during development, there's a bunch of cards just coming in, and we're pulling some cards out. And uh, it, it's it's been a number that's sort of fluctuating uh, through development. So I don't actually have a, a final answer for that. Mm. Did any of the boss that. cards... Were those eventually like player cards and then they just became too powerful and you're like, no, this is like a boss card now? Or were you like super specific with which you developed for who? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's also always that thing that, oh, we made this card. This is fun. We take it into to the game and then we start playing it and uh, playing around with the card. And then we notice this is too good. We, we can't, it's just breaking the game. So. We gave it to another enemy, we gave it to the enemy types, for instance, one card, then let the enemy use it, then we noticed this is no fun getting uh, uh, this enemy just overpower you. So we took that card, gave it to the player, and tried it out on the enemy, and then it was like, oh, okay, this is kind of fun, actually. <laughs> so there are a bunch of those cards, yes, <laughs> actually. That's, that's like, awesome, yeah. Just trying it out, like, we have so many strange cards that uh, we took out of the game because they were just too weird. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that well, Cordes as a mechanic is quite. It's quite. Uh, uh, it's it's really easy to work with in that way because you can sort of uh, condense a, sort of almost any idea down to to having it as a card, and uh, it makes it very versatile and uh, creative uh, uh, to work with. Um, yeah. And Peter, didn't you tell me too that you had to nerf some of the cards because it wasn't like too. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. That's we've just... been doing that for <laughs> <laughs> all the time. Yeah, definitely. Both on the enemy side and the player side. Uh, it's, I mean, it's just difficult to. Uh, to I'd say I, one thing I think also about card games like this is that uh, there are a lot of fans specifically for this type of game. And uh, I'd say many of those. I, I, say myself is one of those type of players and uh, we tend to have quite high uh, standards that we require from those games in terms of <laughs> challenge right also uh, something that's a bit difficult because we we tend to like to create games for everyone that likes the steam world series mm -hmm. and uh, and when we do that and we change genres as we did here uh, again we we also want to make it accessible to as many people as possible uh, so, so there's a challenge there to make a card game that is really deep and challenging for for veterans of the genre, but at the same time something that you can jump into if you haven't played card games. Yeah, uh, I know, Paulina, you hadn't played this kind of game before. No, I hadn't. I I have not. I, but as you said, I played like way back when I played Magic the Gathering, like as a card game, and I can only relate to well, yeah, those kind of games way back when, and then. Um, I still told you that I found it um, pretty easy, easy to get into, and I have no reference from JRPGs or, or, or 
kind of card mm -hmm. model. Yeah. yeah, and it's always always this fun thing with balancing because you want to balance everything, but you don't want it to become like every card is so balanced so it becomes boring in a yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. So you want to have some imbalancing mixed in. So <laughs> yeah. it's always like, oh, is this this card is really fun. It's balanced and everything. But then when you're using it, you know, just like uh, it's like this punch or yeah. like this. The extra to it. It needs <laughs> some contrast in them as well. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was definitely one of the, the fun things for us was to go back and forth and compare like, okay, what set of eight are you using for this character? Who, you know, what cards have you found? What combos have you found that found that worked really well? And um, I think, you know, outside of the card balance, the, the game mechanics are balanced super well. I'm not the biggest JRPG fan. So I, I was telling Gabe like, man, this game has all the best parts of RPGs and none of the ones that I hate. So there's like no grinding, like there's still death, but it's not like overly complex. The item descriptions aren't like insanely long and it, there, there's no random encounters, but there's still a bunch of fun battles. Like it just all kind of, I don't know. I feel like you guys somehow tapped into my brain and, and knew exactly uh, what, what what I would have wanted here. Okay, so speaking of of what what we want, is there any desire to turn this into an actual physical card game? The the art, the combo concepts, everything is so so cool. And and we're wondering, are there people already at Image and Form that are secretly battling it out as Armili and Galio, etc. <laughs> Well, um, yeah, I mean, it, it, <laughs> it's 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 definitely something we've discussed all the way through. As as uh, Stefan says, we it started out as a paper prototype. Uh, yeah. So so it would be awesome to have this as a as a physical card game. Uh, looking at the actual game that we have right now uh, mm -hmm. that you've been playing, it's uh, I'd say the only only or the biggest challenge at least would be that that game is is balanced as a player towards. Uh, uh, scripted enemies or, or specific sure. enemies. and uh, making that into a game that works uh, player against player is uh, is uh, probably something that needs uh, needs to be worked on in that case. But uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it would be awesome if we could make something like that. Uh, but um, yeah, I mean, we would also be stoked to have it. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be so cool. It's a collector, so. <laughs> well, if you guys ever yeah. work on it and you need uh, two people to just like test things out for you, Zach and I, wow. uh, we, 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 we're, we're, we're available. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, it's not so. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. Uh, so between fifteen and twenty people, I yeah. think. Yeah. Yeah, around there. So right. maybe okay. there's only too many of you to make the card game. As well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And we touched on just like how the, the blend of mechanics is, is so great, but were there any, you know, mechanics that maybe stand out that were left on the cutting room floor or or a cool idea that wasn't able to make it into the game that you wish did? Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> There's always like that because, I mean, if when you're so in deep in your game, you always want to have more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you want to have more questing, more uh, chapters, more of everything, more cards. So it was always like things we noticed like, oh, we don't have time to finish this up and polish it up. So we have to just drop it. Mm -hmm. We don't know. We, we probably we have a stash of ideas. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'd say that that's just part of good design. Yeah. You, if, if you actually manage to implement everything that you can come up with, you're probably not making a good game. Uh, you, <laughs> you have to cut, cut out everything Kinder that's not... Yeah. Exactly, yeah. you have to cut out everything that's not entirely necessary for that game. But that can mean that it's just we haven't had time to polish just to, to get to the level that it's actually should be a part of the game. Yeah. Uh, so, And there are definitely aspects of the game world and the mechanics that we think are much deeper than we managed to explore uh, here. Mm. So, yeah, so right. there's definitely material for, for more, absolutely. Um, like we were talking sometimes about combining cards so they became another card. Mm. Yeah, yeah. There's just so many ways to, to combine and make combos of cards that yeah. uh, uh, a lot of games are doing. So, uh, And I think we could probably find even more of those uh, to make it more interesting. But I think, I think we ended up in a really good space. Yeah. There's yeah, for like, to see another card game that had this mechanic, and everybody just comes back to the office like, "Oh, did you see this?" Yeah, and then everybody's <laughs> talking about, "Wow, that's actually a pretty cool thing," yeah. and wondering how we could implement it into our game, perhaps. Yeah. And uh, well, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. I think that with what you have, players are going to be impressed as they unravel the game. I know we were in terms of 
you know, we, we would get on calls and be like, it's got to be like a, th a three act game, right? It, it's got to be, you know, just these characters. It's got to be just, you know, just this. And it's like, oh, another new mechanic or another new chapter or another new character. And it was really exciting to have it just keep kind of surprising us around so many different corners. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, feel, what did I, do? I feel like they faked this out intentionally with, with uh, the end of uh, Act 3. Um, but regardless, <laughs> you know, speaking of all these chapters, right, uh, the challenge ramps up sometimes. And, you know, for players who maybe aren't as familiar with card games or deck building, things like that, do you guys have any tips? Just because you guys are also an RPG on top of a card game. So what would you guys say for someone that loves RPGs but cards aren't really a thing? Do you have any, like, secret tips for them to have an easier time when the difficulty does get a little bit trickier yeah sure um so i mean just from the absolute basics uh, the, sort of the, the the core of, of these types of card mechanics is just to try out things uh, uh just like learn by failure try try things and see if it works if it doesn't uh we uh, put a lot of work into making the game in such a way that if you fail an encounter if you if you don't don't, doesn't, don't manage to uh, get by a uh, challenge on the first try, it, that's not the end of the world. We want you to try out things. We want you to do that so that you can see like different combinations of cards, what works together, what doesn't work together. Uh, you, you're not supposed to select everything correctly the first time. Um, I mean, we, we don't ourselves. Uh, we spent a lot of hours into this game. Uh, so that that's probably, I think, the most basic part of it. Mm -hmm. Uh, if, if you go up maybe a level on top of that, uh, there are some mechanics in the game that, uh, that you really need to work with. Like uh, you can actually look at the enemies and see what weaknesses and strengths they have mm -hmm. and try to play into those. So, yeah. so parts of the game, maybe some cards are very powerful, but in other parts of the game, you sort of have to switch it up because the enemies have changed and they have other strengths and yeah. weaknesses. That's also, also something. Uh, and we also have uh, this mechanic with uh, consumables in the game as well, uh, yeah. that you really yeah. need to, to work, <laughs> yeah. at least in higher uh, to to really go through. And using the combo. Exactly. Oh, yeah, using yeah. the combos, making like the, chains. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Like combinations of cards, both in your deck and how you actually play them. That's definitely key. Yeah, and I mean, if you are the, if you're gaining so much SP, if you're always like your SP meter is so much full, just add some cards that uh, drain the SP or add one card that takes all of the SP and drains it and does a powerful attack, for instance. Or yeah. something. Awesome. W with the consumables, just kind of a side question here. I always try to get through all the battles without using any of them. Yeah. Um, did, yeah. did you did you view the consumables as something that that is baked into to regular gameplay or is more of a a helping hand for for players that are not having as much success well i mean this is a, it's, a, it's a yes or no i would yeah say. yeah it depends very much on what yeah. uh, what level you're playing at i'd say mm -hmm. if you're playing on the uh on, so, so the game comes with three difficulty levels uh squire uh knight and legendary and uh, it's if, if say even if you are a veteran player and you're playing on the legendary difficulty, you're absolutely going to have to use the consumables to. to yeah. yeah. And uh, at the same time, if if you're maybe uh, not as uh, not as used to this kind of game and uh, you're playing at a lower difficulty, they're definitely there to to help you out as well. To to since since they are very flexible, uh, you're you're not limited to the cards you actually draw in your hand, so you don't have to. Uh, survive until you get maybe mm. one of Galeo's uh, healing cards. You always have them available, and that's yeah. sort of a safety net that, that I think is is crucial to to make the game uh, approachable and uh, and easy to get into. Another thing also that it opened up because we wanted also so uh, you didn't need to have a dedicated healer in your party, for yeah. instance, or something like that. So with the consumables, we can balance it up so you can have a full-on fighting crew only yeah. <laughs> that has no healing option because you can just use the consumables instead. Yeah, I mean, we, we want the player to, to feel that they have the power to try out things, as I just yeah. said, and, and this is a way to sort of strengthen that even more. Very cool. Okay, this is the question that I'm, I'm most excited for, and I'm, I'm sure you guys can't say a lot, but it was stated that if there's enough fan interest, DLC is a possibility. Mm -hmm. Uh, which we're, if, if we count for anything, we're very interested in, in the potential for DLC. Um, but do you, do you see that as an extension of the campaign or maybe a side campaign, perhaps same characters or, or 
new faces? Well, <laughs> uh, we here in Image of Worm, we don't we don't start doing or producing a DLC content before we have the game out. So because the game is not out yet, we have ideas for potential DLC and stuff like that that could be coming up, but we are not working on anything at all at the moment. We we want to see how people react on this game, and I mean, if people react like you guys, then <laughs> <laughs> I there's a very high potential that the DLC will, come, will be dropping by. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we're definitely interested in trying to find more things to do with this. But uh, uh, as Simon said, we uh, we feel like we, we we want to make a game and release a game that that we experience as a whole experience. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and to start from there, but there are definitely ideas. We we have lists with stuff. Yeah. Uh, to, to be sure. Lists. <laughs> <laughs> this is probably already on your list. But Zach and I are very curious uh, what happens with Captain Canary. He kind of gets a short end of the stick. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see what happens, man. <laughs> He just got yeah. left there. Uh, well, I, I think he put himself in that position. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also going to make a pitch while I have you guys here for the merchant. I think that they'd have a fantastic deck. They got so much at their disposal, they could have a very diverse uh, set, of, set of punch cards there. Um, yeah, yeah, that's true. That's actually not a good idea. <laughs> um, all right, I, I think SteamWorld as a whole is gaining a, a real foothold amongst Nintendo fans. You know, it's when we see that 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 name pop up, you know, in one of the, the, the directs, it's like, oh, we gotta really pay attention to what's what's coming out. Um, it's it's become one of the more important franchises on on the Switch. Um, and I'm sure you guys saw what Brace Yourself Games is doing with Cadence of Hyrule and how they kind of came out with a surprise Nintendo partnership. Did that announcement give you any inspiration for a potential Nintendo crossover and any ideas of, of what world maybe Steam World could mash up with? Do you want to? Yeah, I will. I will. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I mean, we're definitely, I think, as most of the community, uh, it's just uh, amazing to see that kind of game uh, and the, the opportunity that they got. And, uh, like, the ideas just spawn <laughs> out of nowhere. You just start to think of everything uh, that maybe might be possible. And, uh, yeah, I, I'm not sure if we have any specific ideas for what that would be. I mean, uh, like, uh, Brian... Uh, uh, our CEO, he always talks about the ideas like making Metroid games. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that we've had previously, but uh, yeah. well, you never know uh, if an opportunity arises. A lot of us like Metroid in the office. <laughs> me included. Yeah. <laughs> It says me having a Metroid. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> even had a Metroid on you. So that's the one. There we go. Oh. Um, it's like Reggie. Very, when, very Reggie cool. when he wore those shirts to like tease things. Is that what's happening? No comments. So, so five titles in now. Uh, the the games seem to continue to get bigger in terms of scope, length, variety. Even price, this one, you know, being being a little bit higher. Do do you guys have any inspiration to make something even bigger, even even full scale, perhaps? Or do you think that SteamWorld will always stay as more of a, a downloadable uh, franchise? Yeah, I mean, that's that's sort of a difficult uh, as question to answer because I think we, as a studio, we the size of our games they that have, is something that has increased. As we've grown as a studio, as we've grown as creators, and uh, just finding finding how we can fill that time with uh, with our ideas and uh, uh, our story and experiences in art, and uh, I don't think we we probably won't like we're not aiming for a size for a game. We're, we're, we sure. have an idea and we sort of go from there and see yeah. how how large that idea can become. Um, so, so that's probably going to be something for the future as well. We, I don't think we can go back to maybe sort of the smaller size that we. <laughs> that. uh, that's probably not going to happen. But uh, I, I don't foresee any rapid growth either. Uh, it's, nah. it's just not what we're. It's not what drives us forward. Hmm. No, not really. We're we're always like, we have this amount of people. What can we produce with this amount of people? We're always like fixating on that and trying to nail it and do uh, do the best kind of yeah. uh, game we as a group at the moment. Yeah, 
And I think also that uh, part of our strength is that we we are very much a, a, a team as a whole, and uh, and we help each other out and uh, and contribute with ideas and uh, like a rapid growth. On top of that, we're probably going to lose something of that. Yeah, uh, I think that's part of our success story. So. Uh, it's it's pretty far off uh, if something like that would happen, I think. No. Yeah, because anyone in the group can actually come up to us and just start talking about, oh, I have this idea. Oh, yeah. We can look into it and see how that would work out. Our produce are very collaborative. Yeah, yeah I, 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 I really... Okay. I really, I really respect that. I think like it, the passion and the vision comes through. And and I, I've coached uh, high school basketball for years now. And I was, I was telling Gabe, you know, we were talking about image and form. Like it, it almost seems like you guys are kind of like a, like a sports team, like just like the right size where everyone probably knows everybody, and you all kind of work together and bring your own skills to the table. And it's just, it seems like such a cool environment uh, to be part of. Um, one thing I'm, I'm really interested in is with with the five games now, um, including Steamworld Tower Defense, that some newer players may not even know about. Uh, where would you recommend a, a new, say, Switch owner? Where, where would do you envision them starting within the SteamWorld franchise? I mean, it's kind of like, what are you into, in a way? Mm -hmm. <laughs> because we have some multiple genres, dabbling in all different kinds of genres. So a little bit like, oh, do you like exploring and stuff like that? Then jump into Dig, for instance. Oh, do you like, like a, having a ragtag team that you uh, go on some uh, missions and just want to have like a, uh, what would you say, like sit down for 30 minutes or 20 minutes and then just be done with it and then just continue on next day or something like that. Then Heist, really good for that, for instance. So I think it's actually more what do you want to play in a way? Mm. <laughs> because we're we always want to like dabble in so many genres so we are not really like so constricted in like yeah exactly. one particular game in that way so if you're starting from scratch you pick whatever looks the most fancy for you yeah. uh, but uh, at the same time i mean we we do look into multiple different genres because we also want people to to try out new things so even if you see something from our uh, our world that might not be your first option uh just feel free to try it out uh they we really make them in a way that we want people to to yeah. uh, learn them and uh and learn to appreciate new stuff that they I really mean, didn't think they liked that's how quests came up in a way because yeah. we all card <laughs> so yeah. we wanted to introduce people like you know cards is kind of cool you know yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's really cool with uh, just like, sorry, Gabe, the, the, the different genres, like you can bounce around, you know, so often with the franchise, you have to go in this progression. But if you got quest first and then you find out like, oh, SteamWorld Heist is a thing because it's a different genre, it, it will feel like a totally new, fresh, exciting experience, which is really cool. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and that's what Image and Form, like at least thus far, and, you know, hopefully they continue to do it. Like, Every game kind of like feels different, even like SteamWorld Dig 2, which is like a sequel, like, you know, there's a two in it. It, it still feels like completely different, but just one thing that I'm very, very curious about, and, and you know, you've spoken about maybe growing slowly and things like this, but you've always been like single player focused. That's just kind of how it's been. Have you guys ever like considered multiplayer at all? Do you guys really just love single player experiences and that's how you want to keep things? Because as, as you guys grow, you know, maybe some of you guys play games together. You're like, hey, wouldn't it be fun for SteamWorld fans to play games together? <laughs> well, I mean, most definitely we have looked into doing multiplayer games, but we are more of a like, if the game suits it, then mm -hmm. we do. We don't like start out with uh, creating like Dig 2 and then thought, oh, multiplayer, we just slap it in because we just wanted to work with multiplayer or something like that. It's mostly like, does this work for multiplayer at all? Do we have the time to make this a good experience in single player and multiplayer at the same time then? So it's always like that for us when we're creating games. So if we would do a multiplayer game, it's when we feel like, oh, this is the core. This is actually what it is all about, this game. You need to have it in multiplayer. So there's also a, a big difference between making a multiplayer game that's local and that yeah, yeah. be online. So I know I've heard that discussion sometimes around the office too, but it's, uh, yeah, it always comes down to how many people we hear as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. It, it definitely is something that 
puts a higher requirement on on uh, on how much work we need to put into uh, things. But uh, as Esteban says, it's it's usually dependent on if, if it's a core of the actual idea that we have. And the idea can be anything. Uh, so, so we're very open for, for new ideas and new concepts to try out. And uh, I don't, really don't think multiplayer is, is impossible in that, in that area. Uh, it's just we haven't, we haven't got to it yet in that case. No. <laughs> very, very cool. All right. So um, the SteamWorld series is, is one of our favorites on Switch. And honestly, Quest may be my favorite Switch game. It, it's just perfectly catered to <laughs> to me, uh, which is so much fun. Do you guys have any other eShop games that you've been playing or that you enjoy that, that don't feature Steampunk Robots? <laughs> Well, uh, so I'm currently sort of racking my head in Bob uh, Okay. Uh, this lovely little puzzle game that's absolutely not what it looks like, uh, and having a lot of fun with that, actually. Definitely. Uh, I'm a huge Mega Man fan, so <laughs> <laughs> the Mega Man X series and the Mega Man games, always. And then also uh, Hall of Night, for instance, always a lot of fun. Well, honestly, the last game I played was SteamWorld Day 2. <laughs> <laughs> Great choice. Yeah, <laughs> That's proved. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. And are there any, and I'm sure you're so just immersed right now in Quest and getting this thing out the door. Are there any just even personal genres that, that you love that you would like to to take on as a challenge next or, or a new area within gaming that you want to try and conquer? Uh, well, we have a bunch of lists. <laughs> <So we> have, <laughs> when we were doing the game, like quest and everything, we were like talking out with the whole group, like what type of games should we do actually? Or what type of game are we actually in the group like most? Um, more uh, burning for or having a passion for and stuff like that because i mean any genre goes for us it's mm -hmm. like do we can drop a dating simulator game <laughs> it's like if it's fun and everybody's just presented it uh, with like oh okay this game would be actually a fun concept in the steam world universe and it's a dating game strategy game or whatever <laughs> I'm pushing the dating yeah, game. It looks like it's exactly. exactly. They are heavily hinting that a dating game is coming. Yeah. Steamworld dating. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, no, no exactly. Well, yeah. I mean, it, it's it's more of a if it's something that the entire team can go behind and uh, and uh, just just put our love and passion into it. It absolutely could be anything, and uh, and we're we're pulling inspiration from everywhere, uh, yeah. from 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 our fans, uh, from friends, from family, from ourselves, what we're playing. Uh, so so it's just there's so much to pick from. Uh, yeah. A lot of inspiration and dating. Yeah, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know why, but that was the problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Get us a prototype. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, last last question here. I think that you guys have done such a phenomenal job of just distilling down what makes games fun. And that's what stands out most to us is, is your passion comes through and your, your expertise comes through. And every SteamWorld game I've played has just been so much fun. And Quest for me is the best yet. Obviously, our fans have heard a ton from us about the game and why we love it. Is there any uh, last thing you just like to say uh, to players that that maybe are interested in in picking up Quest and, and kind of just wrapping up your your quest as it now comes to its its final days? Um, yeah, I would say just some some things that I think haven't really gotten through and then and, and, uh, uh, from from the game uh, in in our channel so far is just. How absolutely lovely the the story of this game is, uh, much more so than we've managed to do previously, and uh, and some just awesome soundtracks as well. It's uh, I think yeah, I think yeah, yeah. people are just gonna love that. It's absolutely lovely. Yeah, I mean the soundtrack and the the story is a lot of fun actually mm -hmm. in the game. It's a lot of focus on the mechanics, but yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah and that of is, course. And that is <laughs> 
but uh, but there are things in it uh, beside that that are a large part of the game, and uh, and uh, I think it's going to be something lovely for a lot of fans. Yeah, character development and character interaction overall. Like, what happened with Car uh, Canary Knight? Yeah. <laughs> And I just like the pun, like with the punch cards. That is actual punch card. And did you see that there's like different holes on the? Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's a great feature. Yeah. Yeah. Most important in the game. <laughs> <laughs> it is important. That's yeah, it was yeah. Yep, yeah, yeah. But so yeah. Thought, that's not a thing. No, 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 no that's not true. No, because from the start it was the same amount of yeah, holes yeah, yeah. in the cards, and then someone. We had, uh, we, had of, yeah, <laughs> we had a lot of feedback that uh, the holes on the course didn't do anything. Uh, just, <laughs> everyone, and we just decided that, okay, well then, this is important. <laughs> I was one that actually just came up with a solution at that point. Like, <laughs> yep. oh, how about this? <laughs> exactly. One of the developers just, okay, let me, I, I'll, I put in something here. Just try it out. See if it works. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's, awesome. it's funny how like creators in general and all types of media uh, say that like things like that that they just like accidentally just stumble into it ends up being like some of the coolest stuff. Like it was never like intended that way. There wasn't this grand scheme to make it this way. Someone just kind of figured out a solution for a problem and it ended up being like super cool. I, I've heard that a lot from like really creative people. Mm -hmm. You guys are like clearly super creative, so I just think that that's like <laughs> a, fun, a fun parallel. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you have it. Thank you so much for being here and helping us dive deeper into this incredible adventure. And, and even though this one is just coming out, we're so eager already for, for what comes next, whether it's DLC or, or future projects, you guys continue to top yourselves. And it's it's just so fun for us as gamers. You know, we do this every day of making videos and really diving deep into the news and the analysis. But at its core at, at my heart i'm someone who loves games and have since i was four years old so to play something that brings me back to that just pure enthusiasm is so great so so thank you for making the game thank you for being here uh and thank you guys and girls for watching hope you enjoyed this epic quest that we've taken with image and form uh, we'll be bringing you more steam world quest content soon in the meantime though for myself and gabe thanks so much for watching hit that like button if you enjoyed the video switch force